Well, we hope everybody's doing well out there. We're still shel sheltering in place. Um, uh, some are working from home um, and some very brave and caring people are out there on the front line. And let's give them a shout out. Um, we want to thank our doctors, nurses, uh, all of our firemen and police. In fact, we saw Sherry this morning and uh, um, uh, we just want to thank everybody there associated with um, helping the, the, the general um, uh, community in um, uh, keeping us healthy. Um, thanks. Thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. Um, Kath and I would also love to thank uh, some other people that um, uh, you know, people don't think about, of, but, um, you know, it, we've been in business for a long time and our caregivers and our staffs are the backbones of our businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they go out and uh, care for our senior and disabled community daily. And we just really want to give them a shout out and thank them for all of their hard work and diligence, especially during this time. We, we really, I really, really agree, Jim. And I, I just see in, in, our, in our group, that they are they have went over and above and you know the normal um us as humans the normal grousing and complaining that is just like you really rarely ever hear that now everybody's all about stepping up and it's just it makes you feel good about our staffs and it makes you just feel good about people in general that so many folks have stepped up and our staff has has not has really ex exceeded um any expectation we could have ever this, had. The same with ours. Uh, the yeah. the caring, the compassion they have in their hearts for their clients is um, just amazing. Uh, they, they they are truly caring for their family. So very much, very yeah. Much. So anyway, you know, Kath and I are want to talk about um, right at home this morning, and uh, specifically about the ten reasons why. As we age, for a lot of us, the best place to be is right where you're at, right at home. Um, and that's with help from us. Right. So um, we're just going to have a conversation. And again, if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, maybe we have a client out there that would like to give us a, a shout out, uh, please call us at 847-931-1410 and win yourself a $15 Panera gift, uh, gift card. Um, Kath, what is, let's go over, I mean, these top 10 reasons could turn into 20 or 30. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But let's talk, uh, st start off with, um, what is one of the biggest reasons um, people want to stay at home? Well, it's it's their comfortable surroundings. Um, they feel safe there. They um, they know where everything is, so they don't you know they're not being stressed generally there. It's in their environment of their control, and that and we all want to be in a our comfortable environment. And we want to have control over our environment. So I think that's a big draw. I think that I think that's a big draw. Uh, you know, one one of um, uh, my favorite. Uh, a guest is uh, Jean Lamas from Care Navigators. Uh -huh. And uh, by the way, Jean, if you're listening, uh, we hope you're all better. Jean actually um, um, got COVID-19. Oh, no, I did not know that. Yes, uh, she should be fully healed now, and uh, uh, we hope she's doing okay. But anyway, just want to give a shout out to her. But um, uh, getting to know Jean over the years, uh, mm -hmm. she cared for her mom and her mom was at home and, um, um, doing some events with Jean. Jean said, I have, uh, she said, I'm staying at home. And, uh, this is a nurse that goes out to everybody. She says, well, she said, I want to be as independent as possible, but my home is my home. That's why we call it home. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, we have a lot of people in our industry who feel the same, yeah. feel the same way. And you were, I know we were looking at some information before the show and, um, statistically, I believe 90% of, um, of seniors want to stay in their own home as mm -hmm. they age. That's just, uh, just the human nature, it seems. I, I think it is. In fact, you and I have, um, uh, experience and I, in fact, I, 
uh, mm -hmm. everybody in home care has experienced this. So, um, when uh, a family comes and says to us, oh, we, we might need help from mom or, uh, and dad, and um, mom and dad are initially resistant to it. Frequently, yeah. But we, we go in and we make them comfortable and things like that, and we'll get a little bit further on yeah. on uh, with that. But uh, what, uh, what do you think one of the top, uh, the, uh, maybe number two mm -hmm. um, reason is to consider uh, a home care, especially from right at home? Um, so it's going to be, you know, um, obviously our as our number one preference would be, I guess, if we uh, had our rathers, in most cases, would be a family member to be our caregiver, you know, to give one and one-on-one -on -one support. Mm -hmm. But as, you know, many of us live kind of geographically diverse now and, and so many families, the whole family is working, that's not always possible. So home care offers um, the opportunity for a someone that you don't know originally, but you if it's a good match, they begin to feel like at least a neighbor or friend and that person comes in and they only care and focus their attention on you as the care recipient. And that, that the right fit, that person becomes really, really close to the family. And, um, it's, it's, it's great when there's a good match. So, it's a it's a one on one proposition. So yes, you, it is. You, yep. you, you're getting that full attention mm -hmm. um, that actually uh, you're paying for mm -hmm. that um, and that you deserve. So um, that's mm -hmm. an excellent second reason. By the way, we have a caller. Yeah, let's go to the phones and see mm -hmm. what you got on your mind. Eight four seven nine three one fourteen ten. Good morning. Welcome to Silver Solutions. Good morning, Good morning. caller. Good morning, people. How are you doing out there? I'm doing well. I have a question. Yes. In today's paper, there's a, a great deal of information about uh, what is happening in nursing homes with, mm. uh, with this plague that's going around. Yes. And um, uh, a lot of people who are in there, uh, some of them are there simply for rehabilitation. Um, and others, of course, have, have been there for long term. Uh, People, normal working people, some of them are taking early retirement. Uh, and I think that uh, a lot of people uh, I know in, in my family are giving some consideration as to bringing uh, their parents home from a nursing home uh, because they have time and with the help that's available from organizations like yours, uh, they can manage the situation without having their parents at risk in a nursing home. How much trouble problem is it going to be to take your parents out of that situation? Wow. Um, first of all, let me get your first name. Bob. Hey, Bob, how are you taking care of yourself? Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. it sounds like you're doing a great job. So uh, when we're done here, uh, Mark's going to jump on and get your address. Right. Thanks for calling in. And what a great question and a great topic. And actually, we were just talking about that this morning. Kath, you want to? Uh, yep. So, so, you know, uh, Bob, I, it sounds like you're, you know, really staying as we all are staying on top of kind of the news and about COVID-19 in, in our state. And over the weekend, um, a lot more information, I think, come out about kind of what the statistics are in our state in various congregate settings. And I think as a result, our phones, I know at our office, just lit up uh, yesterday with folks with that exploring that same question. Um, if I want to bring, you know, if I need to understand more about home care because I'm thinking about taking, you know, mom out of the rehab um, so that she will be um, kind of in a safer environment and, but I, first, before I do that, I just want to understand, you know, more about how home care would work. And um, and so one of the, the conversation we kind of have around that is uh, when someone is is coming home, you know, uh, and they, they're coming out of a setting, let's just say there's some folks there that are po um that are positive in the in the congregate setting. Probably the you know, the prudent thing would be for them to kind of get a baseline 
uh, COVID-19 test, um, you know, prior to leaving where they're at to go home just to cut for their own sake and everyone around them's sake, the family as well, um, just, just to make sure they're okay. And then when they come home, I think they need to have an understanding, you know, um, you, you wouldn't want to feel like you've jumped out of the, the frying pan into the fire. So you need to understand what kind of COVID-19 uh, protections that your loved one need at home. And so I can, I can, can't speak for everyone, but I can kind of speak for the things that, that we do. Um, first of all, the PPEs, you know, we, we use uh, masks and, and gloves when we're in the home now because so often we, we work inside that six-foot social distancing um, guideline and so helping with personal care, bathing, dressing, in and out of, sh you know, in and out of showers or helping to get up and down out of a chair if they need help transferring. So we use PPEs even though, um, you know, that, that, if it was family caregivers, you know, it's a different situation. But we realize that when folks look at our caregivers, they think, well, where else have you been? What else have you been doing? So that barrier of a face mask and gloves we always use um, for negative for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And then um, we do things daily. For example, we use an operating system, as many of home care companies do, uh, Clear Care Online is the name of the operating system. Many of the franchises use it. And what it asks them to do, it asks them questions that the CDC say are important every day when they clock in. And then um, during the shift when they go to clock out at our at our office, they're actually asked those same questions again. And so it's ask or do you have you know do you have a fever today? Uh, do you experience any have you experienced any symptoms like coughing, shortness of breath, fever? Um, have you been around anyone that's uh, has been positive for COVID nineteen or suspect they're positive for COVID nineteen? And so there's a series of the CDC guidelines for questions that we clarify multiple times. Every client they go to, they have to answer those same questions over to be sure that they're, you know, that they're compliant. So, and then also we, um, because we do supervisory visits and rounding calls, we're in conversation with clients asking kind of those same questions, you know, how are things going with you? And, and staying on top of observing symptoms and all. So we think that by going home, you, you, you've got less people, you know, caring for you. That would be one, one obvious positive. And then um, you're able to also control that they come into your home, they need to come to your door with their PPE on and, and keep it on while they're there. That's just my opinion on that. And, and Bob, again, great question. Um, uh, Keep in mind, audience, uh, in today's environment, nothing is riskless, Right. okay? Um, uh, we can only um, do so much, um, and our, our caregiving staff tries uh, their best. They really take their job seriously and are um, social distancing themselves as much as possible. But this is, you, you, you as Kathy mentioned, uh, we're anticipating um, we're going to be a, a, a big answer to the solution of social distancing. So one-on-one -on -one care um, is uh, probably the uh, answer that you're looking for, and it is, a, it is a solution that your family should be looking at. And, and things we do in, in our office, we have uh, two whiteboards. One whiteboard is for clients. One whiteboard is for uh, caregivers, and if so, if a caregiver calls or a client, if anyone has a runny nose or a sore throat, it doesn't even have to be on this the list that CDC says. If it's anything remotely could be associated a headache, then we put we take we tell those caregivers we say you need to check with your doctor and you need to go get tested, and they stay out until they're clear to come back. Now, that doesn't mean they're COVID-19 positive, but we're taking no chances. And we, we've we been doing that all along. We care for people, um, and uh, we want to make sure that even if our uh, caregivers get sick, that they have the the uh, um, responsibility to let us know and to um, and to take off a few days if they need to. So yep. uh, the, I hope that answers your question, Bob. Well, it answers my question, I really didn't have any concern about what you people would do. My concern is 
if if the if the uh, situation is bad in the nursing home, uh, they are going to have to make tests on the person before they're going to let them leave that place. Uh, so, is the, is the state of mm -hmm. Illinois going to have a problem with uh, wanting to let them go? Mm -hmm. uh, is the nursing home going to uh, have yeah. some objections? So, so, all I can speak to on that is anecdotal. Anecdotally, um, the, the conversations I've had, say, in the last 24 hours, um, one family um, said the nursing home is going to be testing their loved one. So they've chosen their, their loved one is going to get to stay there and get the test. Another family um, is also talking about bringing their home, their, their loved one home. So they're getting, they're, there is testing going on from in these congregate settings, but um, I don't know, I can't specifically answer the question, is, is the state going to stop anyone from going home? But I think it would be prudent to get that test done before, you know, before they leave for home, just so you'll know. And, and until you get the test results back, it would also be prudent to, to use all the PPEs for family caregivers and uh, professional caregivers. Everyone sort of to use their PPEs until kind of that 14-day period or they get the negative test results, whichever, you know, kind of comes first, um, just to be careful because the testing is needed. I, that, I mean, whether the state, you know, has dictated or not, I believe the testing when you leave the facility is just a prudent thing to do before you leave would be preferable. Yes, and Bob, I haven't heard anything on that, but it is worth uh, for us to look into. Yep. Um, and um, that would be a good question for our, uh, we almost have daily calls with our corporate um, mm -hmm. yep. uh, in the Midwest region uh, to talk about issues like that. So right. that's an excellent question that we're going to yep. be bringing up. So so we have a call uh, with, with our um, franchise system. Also, the Home Care Association and the National Association of Home Care and Hospice Associations um, have um, town hall meetings weekly on, on another day of the week, like Thursday. So we're, we try to stay on top of this, but that is a good, we need to get you, you know, a definitive uh, answer. And maybe next week on the radio, on our radio show, we'll have you know, listen to us again, and we'll have an an a yeah. specific answer to that question. Uh, Bob, actually, with Mark, leave your uh, phone number, mm -hmm. and I will definitely get uh, back to you with uh, anything that I find out. All right. Thank you very okay, much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Hey, Hold Bob, on. I got you covered, man. I got your information, too. So thank you much. All right. We'll have see you. Bye now. Yeah. Hey, we want to give a shout out to Mark, too, for being here. <laughs> That's right. He's, he's, uh, we're, we're spaced here pretty well, I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're I spaced think we're good. Here. Yep. So, um, so anyway, uh, Bob, thanks for that call again. And um, if there's any more questions out there, there was there was an excellent, excellent question. Excellent it's very question. timely too. Uh, please give us a call at eight four seven nine three one fourteen ten. I have another Panera gift card to give away. Uh, and let's move on. Let's go to um, uh, and we're going to have to move pretty fast here. Let's go to um, uh, number three. Um, another reason people might want to uh, choose uh, home care versus um, uh, going into assisted living. Yep. So a lot of times when we when we go to do uh, sit down kind of on the couch and talk about providing care, one of the big deals from mom and dad or aunt and uncle, grandparents, and I would be right there with them is I don't want someone to take my independence away. So really it's important in a home care setting for whether it's family or it's a home care agency like ours, to be cognizant of the important fact, and it's our human nature, we want to be independent as we can. So when we're providing care, we want to provide the, the, the amount that's needed, but keep in mind that as, let's say, after a broken hip or a knee replacement or a, a, new, a bout with pneumonia, as we get better and more independent, let us, you know, regain our independence and be a helper, not a controller. Excellent. Excellent. Um, number four is the flexibility um, right at home offers uh, in the way of um, helping or caring for mom and dad. Um, you don't have to um, uh, jump in with both feet. Um, in fact, many of our clients uh, and a lot of our, uh, though each, uh, right at home is independently owned and operated. Most of us have low uh, minimum hours uh, to start with for mom and dad to try out, which um, 
uh, in the family to um, uh, to ease mom and dad into having uh, somebody uh, helping them around the house. And uh, as we start getting back to work, I think that's going to be a uh, uh, a lot more important. We have a lot of people uh, working at home right now who actually are caring for uh, mom right. and dad. Which which brings us to um, the other calls we were receiving yesterday um, were families who were at home working remotely with mom and dad, and they're trying and being, you know, using foresight. They're saying, okay, we don't know exactly when we're going to go back to work, but we're going to go back to work. So we need to try to put some plans in place or at least get the uh, the understanding so we will put a pan plan in place, what it's going to cost, what the minimums and if there are any minimums and how it works. And uh, so, so we encourage families, if you're at home and you're also taking care of your seniors or disabled um, relative, this would be a good time to check out your options um, and and see see if you know home care would be a, a way to to meet the needs of your loved ones when you go back to work. Mm -hmm. um, and even right now, um, you know, this would be a good time for those family caregivers who might need some respite. This has been a long six weeks. Um, give us a call. We have uh, uh, the right caregiver standing by to. To, to give you maybe just a little break and um, uh, allow you some uh, uh, some time to rest. Um, so the, with, with the flexibility, it gives you um, a, a um, cause to uh, kick the tires and uh, find out what's right for you. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Uh, well, uh, another reason um, for picking home care would be, Kath, you want to take number five? Yep. So um, whenever you bring someone in the home, um, especially to be around a vulnerable uh, parent or grandparent, you want to make sure, you know, that you know as much as you can about them. And so when we think about hiring employees um, for this purpose of providing home care, then we check some things that we think are very important and vet in a lot of different ways. One is um, the obvious, everyone that works in a healthcare setting, including home care, has to have fingerprints in Illinois. And those fingerprints are, the fingers are scanned. And then the Illinois Department of Public Health is involved and the Il Illinois State Police are involved in those fingerprints. Uh, once they're scanned, then that data is, is checked throughout the throughout their database of the Illinois State Police. And if there is a criminal background and there's a whole list of disqualifying convictions that that would keep what someone from working in health care, then we get a report back and um, we were able and the public, uh, anyone in the public can go to the Illinois Department of Public Health. And um, one of the options on that page is the Illinois Healthcare Worker Reg registry i think it's illinois healthcare worker background registry and if you you can put in the person's name and a social to verify that that is them if it's a common name and you can see if that person has a clean criminal background in illinois or not so that's really important and then also we um we also check the normal things the work references work history we talk to, you know, supervisors, managers, coworkers about what kind of job they did prior. And then training. We do an awful lot of more than is required uh, initial training. Then mm -hmm. we do ongoing training throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when someone comes to us to talk about um, home care, we actually send them our training curriculum so they can kind of see what that looks like. And then we also have some insurance in place. Uh, and bonding in place if something, heaven forbid, goes missing or is broken. Um, we have a bonding bonding policy. Each of us do. We have workers' compensation coverage, which is something you don't always think about, but if someone really or allegedly gets hurt in your home, you want to make sure that that is not going to fall on you personally uh, to uh, for the medical cost and disability if, it, if it's of that nature. So that that workers' comp is every bit as important as bonding. Both of those mm -hmm. are important for different reasons. Now, let's get to the insurance uh, uh, for a second. Why is it important for a company like ours to be insured? Uh, you, you covered a little bit, but how about a scenario? 
let's say if someone, um, well, I'll tell you about so one of our actual, an actual thing that happened to us years ago. Someone um, in good faith was doing their job and doing it correctly. And I know, Jim, you guys have had mm-hmm. some of the similar things. It was a, 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 a snowy day and she went out to start her car um, and she fell in the front yard and uh, broke, her, broke her arm and it didn't heal. And so it was quite expensive. Um, but she, um, all of her mel- medical expenses, et cetera, and her lost time from work were covered by workers' comp. You don't want ever to, to be, if you're a, the care recipient in their family, to be feeling like I'm liable if this person comes to my home and they get hurt. You know, some folks think, well, my homeowners would cover it. Well, this is a paid employee, though, so that makes it a different relationship when you're hiring someone to do work. And so um, then likewise, if someone is, if the client is harmed or something in the home is harmed by the caregiver, you want to make sure that there is um, professional and general liability in place in case there was a grossly negligent act that harmed your loved one or their loved one's premises. Excellent. Hey, we only got through five. So this is something that we're going to continue talking about next week. Yep. Okay. So um, 